why you need to treat early with this disorder. And I talked about many of these earlier, including reducing the risk of comorbidity, reducing symptoms, reducing impairments, reducing risk of morbidity and mortality to the individual from accidental injuries and so on. But the one I want to concentrate on as we wrap it up here today is this one. This, to me, is the most exciting discovery probably in the history of ADHD, but let's just say so that we don't get accused of hyperbole at least of the last decade, and it is neuroprotection. What I find stunning is that you will never hear about this in the media. So don't tell me there is no media bias against medication for ADHD. There clearly is, and they won't cover this. And you're about to find out why, because it contradicts all of the hand-wringing sensationalism that mainstream journalists have been engaging in against these drugs. And it refutes it, and it not only refutes it, it shows that the longer you stay on these medications, the more normal your brain development becomes. There are now 32 studies that find neuroprotection from ADHD medications. They're mainly the stimulants, but we can infer from them that they would apply to atomoxetine as well, given the similarities in brain regions that are activated by atomoxetine. But the point is this. We have studies that have looked at not only the frontal cortex, not just the cingulate, but also the basal ganglia, as well as the cerebellum, and they all find neuroprotection. This is the study of the cerebellum. This shows that ADHD children have abnormal cerebellar development. This shows that the areas of cerebellar developmental problems are directly correlated with how severe the ADHD is. And this shows the kids who took stimulants and the kids who didn't. And what you see is promotion of brain growth in exactly those areas related to symptomatic expression of the disorder. This has also been found in the basal ganglia and in the prefrontal cortex. We now have meta-analyses showing this is your basal ganglia, same type of studies right there. First study was of 11 structural studies. Second was a meta-analysis of all 29 neuroimaging studies. And then after that have been two more studies showing that we get neuroprotection the longer you stay on your medication. By the way, the word neuroprotection is probably inaccurate. It's borrowed from the antidepressant literature where it does appear to be an accurate description. Maybe you're not aware of it, but if you're depressed, and you take antidepressants like SSRIs, you have a lower risk of dementia, of Alzheimer's disease, than people who don't take SSRIs. SSRIs are protective of dementia. Absolutely fascinating. This is not neuroprotection. This is normalization. So drugs for ADHD promote brain development and may well be predictors of recovery from disorder. I don't want to say that it completely normalizes the brain, but in all of these studies, the kids who were on their medications for a while had brains that were often not significantly different from the control group. Others, there was a difference, but superior to the growth that was seen in untreated ADHD children. So I find that absolutely mind-boggling because it contradicts the layman's view that these are dangerous, injurious drugs to brain development, and you don't want to take them because of all the risks they pose. And it turns out nature has shown that it's the other way around. They're probably health-enhancing rather than disorder-inducing.